As part of my effort to clean up our raspberry patch, I'm taking down invasives. Invasive trees like buckthorn that have grown up and kind of taken over that area. So I've, I'm chopping those down. I'm gonna let them dry here for a few more days. And then we'll have a bonfire. And I'm using the, the trunks of the, the buckthorn and the other invasives as trellises, as posts for trellises. And to keep them from rotting, I want to keep water from getting down in here because this is where a lot of the rot will happen. So I cut them at an angle and now I'm just going to give them little hats. So they'll just have a little bit of a, a, a shingle hat that, you know, it's not really going to keep it that dry, but Better than nothing. In one of the earliest videos, I showed how I was digging out uh, a big pile of soil and putting down uh, what are going to be beds. I hadn't had time to build the beds and so I had to mow them down with the scythe last week. And now I've figured out I can plant sweet potatoes here. Two characteristics of sweet potatoes make them my choice for planting here. First of all, they really like warm soil. So I can aggressively cover these weeds with a black ground fabric that I dug out of the chicken coop. So here behind the chicken coop, I already buried a ground cloth. So I just need to get the soil off the top and dig it up because I don't actually know what it's doing here. And number two, they don't like to be wet. So again, they can stand the fairly dry conditions that I can create under here. Number three, they can put up with juggalone, which is the toxic substance put out by walnut trees. And now that I've got these mounds of dirt covered with black plastic mulch, I'm going to plant out my little sweet potatoes. These are the first sweet potatoes I'm planting out. I'm a little late. I would like to have had them in weeks ago, but that's how it goes. And they're heat loving plants. So I'm going to trim this tree back a little bit and they'll get plenty of sun, but they need four months to grow and that would put us mid September. So I'm probably gonna have to put hoops over them and plastic to keep that heat in for the end of the season just for them to finish up uh, their tuber production. So I've got those here, and then I also have some that are gonna go in the greenhouse. They say how many days you need to grow them, but really it's units of heat uh, is what they go off of. So uh, the ones in the greenhouse, I can put out a little later because they'll have more heat in that greenhouse. These here, they need a little more time, so I'm getting these in now. So a finished study shows that urine 
and ash used together uh, can be as just as good a fertilizer as store-bought fertilizer on all kinds of plants that need leafy uh, growth. So I've just uh, generated a little fertilizer here and I'm gonna cut it with a gallon of water or a little less than a gallon of water, doesn't really matter. Five to one, 10 to one, doesn't really matter. Just as long as you cut it. And now these peppers are looking a little, um, little light. So I'm going to give them a little bit of fertilizer and I'm trying to get it on the soil rather than on the plants, just not to burn the plants. And I'm just giving them a little tiny drink. So I'm just gonna try and hit those a couple times a week. And now the leftovers I'm gonna give to my cucumbers and my tomatoes. And then I'm gonna put a marker where I left off so that tomorrow when I come to fertilize, um, I'll know where to pick it up. So these really pretty curlicues are garlic scapes. And this is how a garlic tries to reproduce by making a flower bud. If I let this go, it will um, drop seeds everywhere, number one. But number two, it won't produce much of a garlic head. So I have to go and remove all of these scapes. The nice thing is you can pickle them and use them like kind of like a garlicky asparag asparagus in cooking. Now I'll make some pickles. So I brought my scapes inside, and here's what's left of them, and then uh, cut them up and also stuff them into quart jars with the help of my niece who does not want to appear on video, which is probably smart. Uh, we're doing two different types of pickles. We're doing more your regular garden variety pickles. These have a brine, and that brine has um, cup and a half of water, cup and a half of vinegar, uh, two tablespoons salt, two tablespoons sugar, and then some spices and dill and things in there. And then we pour that in and seal it and we'll pop it in the refrigerator. These will be refrigerator pickles because we've never made pickled garlic scapes before. We don't know if we like them, so we don't want to do like 10 pints of them and then have a whole bunch of things that we don't want to eat. That's kind of a waste. And then these, these will be lacto-fermented pickles, which means instead of adding vinegar, which is an acid, to cure these. These are going to use lactobacillus uh, organisms to make their own acid, lactic acid, in here. Um, and they'll ferment themselves. So these just get salt water. So it's uh, two cups of water with, oh, I forget, uh, two tablespoons of salt. I'll post it on the, um, on the link, or on the, on the page below, so you can click on those links and follow these recipes yourself. Um, and these uh, will ferment over the next few days, I'll show you as we let the gas out. And then these don't need to be refrigerated, they'll just sit in the basement until we're ready to enjoy them. Time for a quick update on the different crops I have here. My turnips are looking good, they need to be thinned drastically. My beans are doing okay, they're starting to flower out. My peas, unfortunately, I think are a lost cause. I couldn't keep the weeds down or the birds away. So now we'll move over here. And over here we have my flax emerging and hopefully we'll overtop this grass fairly quickly. And behind me I have some overgrown potatoes that I have to uh, weed here pretty quickly. But they're looking good. And then of course over here I've got my polycrop, corn, beans, and squash. And behind me my squash, beans, and corn planted separately, comparing the different yields which I've talked about ad nauseum. The corn's definitely coming up and is about ready to be thin. And finally over here you can see the oats. And it just looks like grass, but that's what oats are. They're a type of grass. And so they're a lighter green. I'll zoom in here and show you. They're a lighter green uh, in rows. 
uh, that are competing with the other grasses and hopefully they'll quickly overtop them and become the dominant plant in this plot. So everything's growing except for the peas um, and hopefully we'll have a good harvest of all of these. And now once or twice a day we burp these things. And all that CO2 that's being produced by the lactic producing bacteria gets off-gassed. Otherwise this could explode. And then once it's closed down, slowed down considerably, I'll just close it up. <clears throat> Wait till next time. Well now we're in the greenhouse next door. And here I am making sweet potato uh, containers. And so these hold about oh, 25, 30 gallons of material. And so what I have done is um, put in a composted straw. And then each one is getting five gallons of composted uh, chicken manure and other compost. So pretty strong stuff. So I put that in. Mix it around a bit, spread it out. Do the same with this one. Now add some more composted straw. The nice thing about growing this in the greenhouse is a lot of extra heat for those heat loving sweet potatoes. Now there's kind of this core of compost surrounded by this straw and it will continue to break down over the growing season and hopefully in the fall I'll just be able to lift up and tip these over and they'll be full of sweet potatoes. And now I'll just start prehydrating these puppies because they can absorb a lot of water. And now I can plant my sweet potatoes in this giant pile of straw that will continue to rot down over the season. So I just open up a hole in this compost. Sweet potatoes are really forgiving when transplanting. They, uh, rare, I haven't seen much in the way of transplant shock. They establish roots really quickly. They are pretty, I don't want to say drought tolerant, but they don't they're not water hogs, at least not in my experience so far. Now I'll water them in, not that they need it, but... And that's it. Since it's raining today, I might as well take the chance to uh, take care of my tomatoes, which means cleaning out the suckers here before they get big. I can just do it with my fingers as they're small. This is just to encourage a central growth along the, the, central, uh, the central leader here. This one's uh, not too much taller than its existing attachment so I'm not going to do anything. So the way I prune them is this typical way at the juncture of each one of these branches there are little suckers that grow and these suckers would become almost full-fledged plants of their own and they just make too much bushiness especially in a greenhouse environment maybe outside It'd be fun to experiment with last, let, letting it go, but like you can even, if you want extra plants, like I could put this in a cup of water and it would have roots and then I could plant this, it would become its own plant. I have plenty of plants. I've got uh, probably 200 tomato plants this year, so not really necessary. And see here, it's trying to split into two halves. And if I have more space, I could let them grow into two halves, but because there's two halves, I, I'm just gonna pick one and I'm gonna have it go this way, so I'm gonna pull this one off. Otherwise, we get a split plant and then it just becomes really unwieldy. And now I just collar it onto the net here. 
Today is Ad Fertilizer Day. And by fertilizer, I don't mean, you know, bought in chemical fertilizers because a lot of our bought in chemical fertilizers are derived from fossil fuels, so we don't have them. Um, what we're doing is we're adding ash, urine, and compost to all of our uh, tomatoes and cucumbers and peppers and sweet potatoes in the greenhouse. Uh, each tomato plant needs a total of one kilo of ash through the year, so today I'll give them a quarter of that. Um, I'll add the same to the, the cucumbers and over the course of the summer all the tomatoes would need about four liters of urine. Um, if we are just fertilizing with ash and urine according to a finished study which I wrote about on the blog you can check that out lowtechinstitute.org this last week we had that blog post come out. Um, but because we're also adding compost we don't actually need that much of either ash or urine so they'll have a super abundance of resources available. Today I'm adding about a half a pound of ash to each tomato plant and then I'm going to add uh, a scoop of compost um, and then I'll continue. I've already been uh, fertilizing with urine along this line and I'll finish adding uh, urine to, uh, to this row and then I'll start on this next row. Well, that will do it for another week on Food Foodmageddon. We uh, got a little behind the production schedule again just because the rest of our life intruded on uh, our food growing. Uh, we're doing a bee breeding research project, which you can find out more information about on our website, lowtechinstitute.org, which you should be checking out anyway. You can subscribe there to our blog, where you'll learn things about like ash and urine uh, fertilizer b before you hear about it here on the web series. We hope to get another uh, podcast out soon. Uh, you can find us the Low Tech Podcast on most of the podcast apps. Uh, feel free to reach out to me directly. I'm Scott at lowtechinstitute.org. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all those things. So anyway, I uh, hope you're having a good week. Hope you're staying safe out there. And uh, we'll catch you back next week. Thanks for watching. <laughs>